How do you dismantle or eradicate Hamas, given they're a terror group that live amongst the civilian population? We know this. If, yes. And if you need the population to come with you on this process of removing Hamas, surely what is going on at the moment is having the opposite effect. If thousands and thousands of Palestinian civilians who had nothing to do with it are being slaughtered yes. um, on a daily basis, it seems, and if that escalates through a ground invasion, then surely it will have the opposite effect, won't it? I mean, you may well end up dismantling a lot of Hamas terrorists, but if you also kill tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of civilians, you are surely going to alienate those people from wanting any form of deal with anybody after this. Absolutely. And this is why Israel should be very careful about the way it operates. Uh, Israel is not a terrorist organization like Hamas. It is not aiming to kill as many civilians as possible. Uh, it is very difficult, of course, to fight a terrorist organization which is hiding inside a civilian population. Ideally, uh, there should be a way for civilians to move out of the combat zones. Uh, Egypt, that shares a border with the Gaza Strip, uh, should be willing to accept Palestinian civilians for the duration of, of the war in order to protect them. I would say that even Israel should explore the possibility of receiving at least women and children from the Gaza Strip into Israeli territory, you know, maybe allow the Red Cross or some other international organization to build temporary safe havens for Gazan civilians on Israeli soil for the duration of, of the conflict. If Israel wins the war against Hamas without providing for an alternative future for the Palestinian civilian population, we will only get something even worse than Hamas a few years down the line. You're a historian, as you said earlier. This has been going on now for over 70 years, this conflict. Yeah. It flares up um, every few years, it seems, with some new form of, of hideous warfare. Uh, when you chart back to the very start of all this, which many people are trying to do to try to explain mm. how we've reached this place, was the big mistake in the first place the displacement of several hundred thousand Palestinians? People, for instance, talk a lot these days and, and for many years and for good reasons about the suffering of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians who lost their homes in 1948. Mm. Few people know that as a result of the 1948 war, also hundreds of thousands of Jews lost their homes in retaliation for the war. Uh, Jewish communities all over the Middle East, in Arab countries, in Egypt, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria, who lived there for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years, and had nothing to do with the war, they were driven out. Mm. Hundreds of thousands of Jews, the largest group of people now living in Israel are Jews that were expelled as refugees as a result of the 1948 war. Now, does this justify what happened to the Palestinians? No. Does this justify the Israeli occupation and the mistreatment of Palestinians there? Absolutely not. And we shouldn't use historical injuries to justify more injuries. If you have to choose between justice and peace, choose peace. Every peace treaty in the history of the world was based on compromise. No, we need some level of justice, of course, but there is never a possibility of absolute justice. If you pursue absolute justice, you will only perpetuate war indefinitely.